ग्रीटिंग सेवन गुड मॉर्निंग बीन लॉन्ग बिजी एस्टडे वेरी वेरी बिजी एस्टडे आई विश टू शो यू समथिंग आई एम वॉकिंग टूवर्ड्स रमणाश्रम एंड आई वॉन्ट यू टू सी दिस ब्यूटिफुल हिल दर That's the Arunachala Hill. Very close from where I usually live. I'm just walking towards Ramana Ashram, so I thought I'll just uh, switch on this live, and uh, you can see this beautiful hill. The climate is very good today. Actually, it's not hot nor cold, and it's slightly raining also, drizzling. A huge ground here. I just wanted to take this view from here. So this is very close to Ramana Ashram. Actually, Ramana Ashram is somewhere down there, at this foothill. So the track from Ramana Ashram actually goes up like this. You have to climb the hill like this. You stay on top. So while you climb also you don't actually go to the top all the caves virupakshi caves and all all just here only so everything the whole trekking ends here okay you everything ends here from here uh, there is no trekking up and who uh, this is all completely uh, reserved forest area can you see that This area is completely reserve area forest, and this approximately somewhere here is the end point of uh, whenever you climb from down Ramana Ashram. So all the caves, everything you'll find this side, and uh, the whole hill is surrounded by a uh, lot of caves and uh, many ashrams, small small ashrams and all that. So usually, people who trek from here, this is not allowed. Actually, it's illegal to anybody move from here to here. Actually, uh, it's a prohibited place because it's a government forest land. and beyond that side there are uh, you know uh, some little forests okay this area was uh, completely a forest in one day so tiru means uh, in respectfully they say like what we call shri shri swanso uh, uh, it's a respect word tiru tiru mandiran tiru mular they have all that tiru word and uh, vana vana means forest so this is all a forest dense forest in those days and malai means the mountain so tiruvanna malai that's how it's called respectfully they are calling that mountain of uh, jungle of forest so that's how it is and uh, i came from there from that area now i'm just going to move to this area i thought i'll just make a short video so that you can have a view of this sacred mountain powerful hill now this is known as a pillar of light in satyuga the shiva the jyotirlinga the first uh, the first form of light this appeared as a form of light this hill you know that's why it's called shiva himself in the dwapar yuga the same light pillar of light this was there as pillar of light okay it was embodiment of pillar of light it is a manifestation of shiva and in the next dwapar yuga the same turned into emeralds you know pearls and uh, gems and all that all the costly stones valuable stones that's how it got converted every yuga it changes its forms and then in the treta yuga the whole thing was golden turned into gold this was completely gold and in the kali yuga that is right what we are right now in or we have just passing that kali yuga transition this turned into this rock and stones so called hills so as the yuga that was the quality of this tatva so it has been since four yugas since you can say since the starting of time and this is uh, considered very holy because kailash is known to be the abode of shiva the home of shiva 
but tirunamalai is known to be shiva himself that's how the significance goes so this was shiva in the light form which became then emeralds valuables and then it became gold and these are all the higher high very high vibration vibration matter emeralds and all are very high vibra- vibration matter little more vibration decreases it becomes gold and the gold when the d- uh, vibration decreases it becomes stone and mud and that is how this hill is formed so that's how the history the puranas and all speak about it so we might not be able to understand this phenomena and that's okay if you don't understand it but that's how it has been through all these yugas and that is why the significance of this place uh, why this hill is reverberating and you know as devi amma was talking about so many dimensions inside this hill we do not know it's not in the grass form it's in the sukshma form so astrally this hill also has an aura like we have an aura the aura is huge it radiates so anybody who is living in this aura will be permeated by that uh, consciousness provided they are aware of it that's important you cannot tap into any energy or consciousness until you become fully aware of it you have to become aware of it. so this is tirunamalai you can see everywhere all the sages all the monks all the yogis uh, the so called uh, people who beg for arms here you can find all of them here so you can see the hill see here i just took a turn but it's still here i just came from there and the route that i walked from right now is the same route that topiyama walks every day she usually walks from this road where i am actually walking she begins her day at 6 am correctly she moves out she starts walking on this path where i am walking exactly on this road she walks on this wrong side of the road and she goes uh, for the girivalam early in the morning 17 kilometers by foot she travels she's uh, so she travels by foot for 17 kilometers and even in the evening she takes another round yesterday i met her she was there in uh, yogi ram surat kumar ashram that is very close i will run this video till i reach ramana ashram which is very close here so that you can see this road and you can see how the um, hill also is visible uh, around this road i'll take the pavement see you can see on the left side is very clearly visible the hill there are all ancient temples and all that the old temples so the whole hill is huge space it is it looks a small hill but very very huge even if you live here for uh, 15 days continuously also it will be difficult to explore this hill a hill completely it will take a lot of time because there are so many places in that and there are hundreds and thousands of jiva samadhis all around this place many yogis many rishis many siddhas have been here have taken samadhi and this is a very active place astrally also astrally we cannot see so we do not know so these are the streets of tirunamalai you will find plenty of dogs here plenty of dogs plenty of monks very difficult to identify who is a monk who is a begging for arms who is an avduta we never know because they are all sitting in different different uh, realities very difficult because if somebody really wants to hide themselves they will do in any form in any garb they will hide themselves very difficult to know however i it's my personal experience that if uh, it is a genuine real avduta or siddhas they will never look into anybody's eyes they will just be walking and living their life completely aloof 
they will be completely detached from the world they will have nothing to do with the world so little more to ramana ashram yogi ram surat kumar ashram also is uh, very close here yogi ram surat kumar was a great mystic here he used to call himself a beggar but he was uh, self realized and he was almost you can say he was an avdoot he is an ashram here yogi ram surat kumar so there's a hill little you can see from here this is the girivalam path okay this is the road that is uh, circumambulating the tirunamala hill arunachala hill so this is the 17 km track i'm saying it's not exactly 17 it's somewhere between 14 and a half to 17 and they have all these uh, major shivalingas temple see there you can see the view So it's a actually a five minute walk from where I stay. This is Ashok Bhai's place where I stay. If you like to stay there, uh, I've already put his uh, name and phone number. You can get in touch with him. I can also put the address here uh, on Google Maps. You can go. It's it's not a very uh, high five place. It's a very uh, modest place. So if you prefer modest uh, living here. it's a good why i i prefer is because it's very close it's not very far most of the hotels are or so called big hotels are all little far from here see there is a hill it's still there eh? the best part in tirunamalai is wherever you go you will be able to see the hill that's how it goes we used to do a lot of projects here before lot of seva projects and all that uh, this was during the covid time and uh, a lot of you guys had sponsored and donated and all that was completely utilized for the yogis here to provide them food and medical attention so the team here who very closely worked with me in that time grateful to him there were two three of them and they did an excellent job at that time in reaching all these material to the yogis who were badly affected during the pandemic because there was absolutely no visitors here during that time and you can see all the beggars all the people who live on arms here depend largely on people so we were at that time able to give a lot of uh, aid that is the medical aid many of uh, the yogis were taken for treatments and uh, like most of them had cataract operations uh i believe close to around a dozen cataract operations were done during those days you can see they are all sitting here so now also we do we do only on demand like if there is a real demand if somebody is a, uh, genuinely need we find we are certain and then there are sponsors for that who sponsor for their medical treatment and all that so we got a couple of good people here very good souls who look into all those uh, periodically we do that we are not consistently doing it because my feeling is how much ever you do it's not an end so it doesn't mean that we exhaust ourselves in doing it but whatever opportunity life gives whenever we can actually we can make use of that so i think this we are very close to ramana ashram now uh, ramana ashram mobile and shooting and all that is not allowed at all so it's it's a <laughs> it's pointless to go there Next to Ramana Ashram is the Sheshadri Swami Kala Ashram, and his uh, samadhi is there. So you can see the hill here. Okay, I am just thinking that I should take a right turn now. I don't know. So instead of going to Ramana, I'll just show you a view of Yogi Ram Surat Kumar. You have never been this side, but see, you can see Ramana's road goes straight there. But I just took a right turn before Ramana Ashram, and you can see the board here. Yogi Ram Surat Kumar Ashram. Shivani Becker, can you please tell of the history of uh, Topiyamma in English? I would be, I would greatly appreciate it. I am not sure we might meet Topiyamma because this is our location. I don't know if he has gone for the, uh, if she has gone for the Guru Vellam, then it might not be possible because uh, she usually uh, takes the whole. hill parikrama in the morning 
but if she is here we don't know she might be sitting here yesterday we came here she was sitting here Topiuma's history nobody knows much she was just found here because most of the time what happens is uh, the avdhuts appear very crazy because they are all in the shabbily dressed and uh, they are not in their um, they are not in their what you call normal attire or the normal way of living uh, they appear very very weird they appear like uh, frantic and uh, crazy they do things they talk that way in uh, a very crazy language uh, often abusing people or in their own world and you know like if you look at topiamma from close uh, nobody would prefer to go close to her because she is uh, almost uh, in dirt all the time and you can see her saliva drooling drooling and uh, this is because uh, they do not have body consciousness so people do not understand uh, what kind of this is you know there is no hygiene and health there are so many when i put her videos i get so many comments on youtube like uh, this is a crazy person please take her to the hospital please give her a wash and please get i just tell them come and try it <laughs> come and try doing that to her you will get it <laughs> they don't need anybody's attention for that matter they are they are avdhutas they they have gone transcended beyond the three gunas and they are beyond anything that is gross their state of consciousness is so high it's it's like say you can say god form in a human body and that human body is nothing grossly they cannot even hold it properly so but they come for various reasons they have their own work to do and they prefer to do it and they they exist around till their body burns off prarabdha whether they have their own or whether it is taken on from somebody they actually burn it out in their bodies and that is why many avdutas are seen in such kind of dire situations where people we cannot understand we have just one question asking uh, if they are great avdutas why don't they save themselves they are not bothered about saving anybody they are here for saving you and me they are more about that than their own bodies they they literally dissolve themselves uh, in the service of others so they don't do anything purposely they because they do not have mind their mind body is dissolved if you see read the chidakasha gita you will come to know that all the gyanis all the great mahapurushas all the avdutas have dissolved their mind bodies the mind sheath does not exist for them as you know there are five sheaths the physical body etheric body the mind body and the wisdom body and the bliss body there are five bodies out of that one body disappears that is the mind body so when there is no mind imagine how a person would live it is very spontaneous spontaneous there is no thinking no thoughts involved imagine there is no thoughts involved you can judge a person you can talk you can have opinions conclusion only when you have a mind when they do not have a mind how can they judge you they don't even think about you they don't think anything people when you when you look at avdutas we always feel that oh they must be thinking this they must be thinking that they don't think anything they have nothing to do with thinking the thinking process is finished in them so when they look at you they are not even thinking about you they are looking because it's a spontaneous action that is happening from nature that is why it said they are godly so if even they glance at you even they look at you okay i'm here and then if they look at you so many things happen into your consciousness and that is why people run behind avdutas okay i'm near the ashram i won't be talking so loudly now i'll see till where this can go and if i feel if it is restricted anyway i will just shut off they usually are fed here the sadhus yogis are fed here so they are given food here so this is ram surat kumar ji's uh, ashram 
And Topia Ma normally sits, yesterday she was sitting here. She was sitting here and looking at the people coming, walking in. Then she was sitting here with the beggars. There are beggars sitting here in the morning. So she was sitting there yesterday and absorbed in herself. So this is uh, our uh, Yogi Ram Sarut Kumar and the uh, ashram and this is their accommodation. I believe you can get accommodations here also. You just need to contact the office and there are certain criteria. If you fulfill that, then they will give you a room here. A very divine place to even stay here. And you can see the Arunachala Hill from here. See there. Ashram main gate closes, uh, day opens daily at 5 a.m. and closes at 9.30 p.m. After it closes, we will not reopen for any reasons. Okay, I do not know how they treat cameras here. So what I'll do is I'll just hold this as I enter into the ashram. That's the ashram. And this is the parking space here. This is probably the first time I'm covering Yogi Ram Ji's ashram. Everywhere there is board, entry is prohibited for drunk people. So that's the ashram. And he is the mystic. Yogi Ram Surachi. So I'll put down this mobile for a while, just stay on, let me see. Footwear stand. Keep it here. Ama? Ah, no. He's asking me to buy flowers. Okay, here is the ashram. Okay, there, there is a bird. Uh, I do not know. This is their meditation hall. And uh, Topiama sits here most of the time. When, some, when asked by someone what is right and what is wrong, this selfishness is wrong. This is his words. To think that you are separate from others is wrong. To think that you are isolated is selfishness. This is wrong. To think that all are one, all in Father, and there is only one life is right. These are the words of Yogi Ram Surajji. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, take the mobile in, but it's a beautiful place. A lot of chants go on. His Samadhi is here. Uh, in this world, nobody is left without criticism, without exception. All the great people have been criticized, even Rama and Krishna. If Rama and Krishna were present today, they would also be criticized. Laughter, he laughs here. You have to put up with it. There is no need to run away. Yogi Ram Surat. Beautiful quotes these are. Yeah, here he says, this beggar has not built any temple nor has he written any books. There is nothing about this beggar's life that is inspiring. But he has left a name for mankind. Father has given a name, Yogi Ram Surat Kumar, to humanity for its benefit out of his love. So this is their hall and all. It's a beautiful place, very beautiful. We come here very often, very silent, very calm. And there's a huge office, uh, Samadhi is there inside. And a lot of activities going on. And I, I cannot go beyond this point. I do not think there's no board here about cell phone, but still... Inside, I'm sure it's not allowed. So that's the entrance of Yogi Ram Surat Kumar. Samadhi. Yeah, I think they have this uh, ashram program schedule. Well, if anybody wants to read this all, you might have to just pause the video because I'm not holding it anymore here. 
So it's a very clean premises here. And uh, Topiyama sits here. Most of the time she wanders here. If she is not in the Girivalam, you will find her surely here, Topiyama, any other time. I, I, I can't see her here. So I believe she is certainly gone for her Girivalam. This is how he looked. Anadhanam and all goes on here. This is a huge hall. Very beautiful place. Uh, if ever you come to Thirunamalai, do definitely visit this place, Yogi Ram Surat Kumar Ashram, where you will definitely find Topiyama. If not in Girivalam, she will be always here. Uh, there is some link between Topiyama and this place. Uh, I don't know if you know Papaji of Kanjangad. Kanjangad, uh, we have two ashrams. One is Nityananda Ashram and the other is Anand Ashram. It is Papaji's ashram. There also, when if you go to Kanjangad, definitely visit the Anand Ashram. Very powerful place. Papaji was the main yogi here and this is their meditation hall. So, Papaji was the yogi here. One second. So he, he attained self-realization here, Bapaji. I'll try to see if I can see his photograph. You'll realize who is he. I'm taking my footwear, just hold on one second. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's his photograph. You have a clear photograph of his here. See here. That is Yogi Ram Surat Kumarji. He used to walk here and only dogs used to follow him. Follow him. So sometimes I've seen Topiyama sitting here, facing the Girivalam, sitting in Padmasan here. Very strange. They, why they do what they do, God only knows. She will be sitting that side facing. So you can see the Arunachala hill from here also. See, there's a beautiful peacock here. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, it's a, he has come from the place. There are a lot of peacocks here actually. Many peacocks you'll find here. The only creatures that walk in so much grace. Look at him. <laughs> Thirunamala, you will find lot of peacocks. He is busy eating something. Peacock is known as the uh, Vahana of Muruga. If you know Murugan, Murugan is very prominent and uh, very powerful here. Murugan is known to be Shiva's son. Uh, Skanda Purana, you will find all is uh, mentioned. So, Murugan is the main deity here in Tamil Nadu and uh, the peacock is known to be the Vahan, the vehicle of uh, Murugan. And uh, one mystic once told me, the mystic did not want to, see they have a school here, a small school, nursery school and primary school. One mystic did not want to reveal the name, so I will not take the mystic's name, but uh, I was told that uh, Ramana is an avatar of Murugan. <laughs> it's very, very, very strange. And that, uh, that is, uh, we could confirm it immediately because I said there is so much of peacock around, peacocks around uh, uh, Ramana's uh, samadhi. They all keep moving there, so many peacocks. See, that's the hill there. And this is Yogi Ram Sangat Kumar. Ashram we are exiting, so you will find most of the time Amma sitting inside, Topi Amma or somewhere here or she will be sitting in the center of the road here. And lot of people will be around her sitting and gazing at her, trying to take her blessing, trying to feed her, bringing her tea, bringing her eatables, some eatables she will kick, some she will throw it, 
some she might take and drink some she might take half and give the rest half this is how the sadhu seva is done here you can see they are all having their breakfast here is another guy so it all depends yesterday i saw somebody coming in a lady coming in giving a cold drink to amma and amma immediately threw it out <laughs> so they know they certain things are there and people do that because they want to get rid of their karma most of the time uh, they are not bothered about what happens to them but uh, the avadutas but all they want is just get rid of their karma in dire situations but i always suggest when you go to avadutas don't say anything don't ask anything just be in their vicinity because they are all knowing whatever has to flow will flow flow what is for your highest good will just flow there is nothing to ask anyone because sometimes we do not know what we ask is for our good or what so these are the streets of i'll i'll i because i wanted to make this video till ramanashram so i'll be keeping it on till we reach ramanashram so you can see you can actually walk and do it i would always prefer walking than taking auto everywhere because you keep walking in the space it's a very sacred space it will it will always enhance your your walking awareness is very important keep your awareness on your koshas always as you walk anywhere in any holy places do not put your aura on the outward put it always keep it centered in your being you can keep it centered in your aura or in your subtle bodies if you know what is subtle bodies you can just keep moving your consciousness within your different bodies the other four subtle bodies or if you do not know nothing to worry about just know that you have an aura a bubble of space around your physical body so just keep your awareness on that space bubble around your body and then keep walking and see what happens the experience will be nothing less than mystical that is when grace flows i was reading today many mystics who are talking about grace ramdas ji who is connected with again bhagwan ramana maharishi ramdas ji used to say that grace is always present you got to just tune in with it the moment you tune with it grace flows we believe that grace is somewhere to be seeked and sought out we believe that we have to go to some person and take grace even bhagwan ramana yesterday i was reading he said even the guru whom you feel you have to go and seek blessing it's not needed if you realize that guru is beyond the body if you put your awareness he didn't say this i'm saying if you put your awareness on the consciousness of the guru the same mystical things will happen what i'm telling you right now we are people of awareness we move our consciousness we are training and practicing ourselves to live in awareness what you call live in awareness is nothing but living in consciousness so instead of gross we settle our awareness on consciousness because there is where everything happens and if you live a life of awareness you will never find yourself alone you are always there with some higher beings it's a strange experience yesterday i had a personal consultation with someone in canada and i was talking the same because the session began and the person saying i am alone which immediately i said that's false Maybe it's not in your realization. You are never alone. You are feeling it's not. You are alone, or nobody is there with you because you are looking at the gross of things. Gross, and yes, you will be always alone because you came alone grossly with the gross body. You will go alone with the gross body. Surely you are going to be alone. But if your awareness is on the consciousness, you will notice that you are not alone. There is some other power that is always guiding you. that power is very mysterious and that power we call as guru the inner guru is your higher soul itself the guru soul and god are not different bhagwan ramana has again and again repeatedly repeatedly in all his texts in all his lectures whatever satsanga he did he has only assured one thing the god guru and self that is our soul are not different they are just one and the same 
as soon as you turn inward you will find it if you are outward you will not see it you will not have it so it's all about your consciousness right now i'm walking in awareness and that is why i train people i teach people to walk in awareness to talk in awareness to live in awareness do anything in awareness we might be sometimes in our gross self that's okay because we are all humans it is all shifting it is all upon you when you want to shift you can shift when you want to enjoy the material world you can be there but still you can keep your awareness on the material world so the quality of the experience will be different see this is ramana ashram i think i'll walk till uh, cheshadri swami gul because i always have my breakfast in cheshadri swami gul canteen it's very hygienic and very beautiful and very delicious so this is the ashram and shop on outside it's a small gate but a huge ashram inside that's ramana so they have just Not just, I think six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock. The open. That's Bhagwan Samadhi Mandir, which you can see. And straight, if you go, it goes to the back end of the ashram. From where there is a road, which will take you up this hill to Arunachal. There's a back entrance. That's Ramana Ashram there. And little further is Cheshadri Swami Gul, where I always have my breakfast. So morning uh, today I got late. Otherwise I always leave by five or five thirty. Come to Sheshadri Swami Gul. I meditate for some time there, and then in that same compound there is a small canteen. I take my breakfast there, and then I come to Ramana Ashram. Very so you can see how closely it's walking. In between Ramana Ashram and Sheshadri Swami Gul is this temple of Takshina Murti. If at all I believe in temple or I bow to any temple, it is this one, <laughs> the deity of Lord Shiva, the Dakshina Murti. This one. I can't focus here because it's considered disrespectful here in Tamil Nadu to focus your camera on any deity or god or garbhagrah or altar. They will literally snatch away your phone. <laughs> There are a lot of beggars here. A lot of fruit stalls here. So uh, earlier, when I used to do my sadhana, I used to be always on the hill. I used to come here, have some fruits, have some coconut water, and go back again to the hill and spend my time there. Not really meditating, but in awareness. I used to walk in awareness in the uh, under the trees and toward the hills and spend myself there, contemplating, or take a book and be fully absorbed in it, and then come back again, have little coconut water or something from here. and then go back again to ramana ashram spend time near the samadhi so if you do this kind of practice for 3 days just 3 days there you are left alone with yourself in this awareness mark my words <laughs> you will have a great transformation in your consciousness without fail because you are in a very sacred space that is vibrating with this kind of energy but that vibration will not be felt until you put your attention put your focus put your consciousness on that space the entire space right now is filled with molecules and atoms of that divine love and light is all divine love and light that is reverberating in the space so that uh, aro usha restaurant uh, that's where i have at least one time a day meal this is sheshadri from the it is very close from there and that's my favorite tea spot i have very good view. that's yogi ram smrit kumar jeeva samadhi and this is the little canteen where we get very delicious food i'll just take a little shot from close by here this is very powerful cheshadri swami gul is one of the most revered and important siddha or an avatar of tirunamalai He is the one who brought uh, Ramana Maharishi from the Arunachalaeshwara Temple because he was in Samadhi at age 21, very young age, 
he picked up Ramana because rats were literally eating away his feet and he was not even aware because he was in deep samadhi. So Sheshadri Swamigal brought and placed him here. After that, 21 years of age and till his end, Ramana was here. He never went anywhere outside. The hill, holy hill. Where we hear are all samadhis of many saints and mystics. Uh, there is where the Garbhurga is and they do not allow shooting in the Garbhurga where the Jiva Samadhi is. The Jiva Samadhi is inside that. So I'll just move out. I'll put a photograph later of this uh, Samadhi. We'll get to know. So this area is full of Jiva Samadhis. This whole ashram is full of Jiva Samadhis. Last time I had made one mention here. There's a couple of years. Here, Mukupudi Swami, there was a great Avdut who used to live here, literally, in the space. So there are many Jiva Samadhis here. Many, many Jiva Samadhis here. This is one, underground. So the ashram literally stopped digging after that because wherever they dug, dug they saw Jiva Samadhis. And we don't know because this is four yugas. Four yugas it has been and multiple siddhas and rishis and avatars and avadus have taken samadhi here. They have merged into general consciousness in this holy land. So I think I'll end my video in a few minutes. See, this is a little space, this is uh, their own canteen, small space, but uh, you can find even all the Westerners and all having food here. This is Mukhapudisam, this is the Siddha I said, Abadur, he just took Samadhi two years back. Hama, or Italy or what I could So here I am. Ah, Sara, Sar Poitar. Bangalore poet. They're asking where is my companion yesterday who was there. So that's why he has returned to Bangalore. I told he's returned to Bangalore. So here is his hotel. I'm going to have my breakfast. You can see the photo. So guys, thank you for being here and walking with me. It was a nice walk the talk here. I'm looking at messages. Can you please list, tell the history of... Okay, this I have already replied to. Shivani, yes, she is another high state that needs nothing. Can someone offer her a place to stay? No. Absolutely not. Avduds should never be because we are disrespecting that. When we say you need a house, they don't need any house. They walk in wilderness. They walk in complete nakedness. The earth is their home. The sky is their place. I, you want to have a look at how the food is. This is how it looks. Simple and yummy. So they, they don't need all that. They absolutely don't need any kind of home, they don't need anybody's help, but yes, people try to provide rest, it's their wish. Sometimes they walk into somebody's home, they live in some spaces, in temples, or in, under the trees, in the mountains, in the caves, you never know. They don't accept any kind of such favors from anybody. They are not somebody whom we take pity on. Actually, when we, many people put messages in my comments, in YouTube and you know they feel compassionate, they feel pity or oh, something do something for her. I always tell them, you feel when you look at them, they seem to be pitiable and you take pity on them. But actually they take pity on us. Yogi Ram Surat Kumar used to call him a, himself a beggar. In real terms we are beggars. We need things of the world. They don't need. 
they are beyond it they cannot affect it we are dependent on things they are not <laughs> so yogi ran surit kumar called himself a beggar and other mystics other avdutas maximum of them i have seen calling us the beggars we call them mad men mad in their own world in their own space and i have seen avdutas calling look at all the mad men around me the mad in the material world some mystics and saints used to say yes we are mad behind the divine somebody is yet mad behind liquor somebody is behind lust somebody is behind worldly material somebody is behind fame name popularity wealth so they would say in real terms who is mad <laughs> many of those i have heard one of those say when you go to temples there are beggars sitting outside so the temple outside is full of beggars and the temple inside is full of beggars somebody is always begging for something outside they are begging for arms inside they are begging for child or some wealth some name some something like that from the world so this is very very deep very very deep when we come to their words and their interpretation of this world okay i think this much um, no other comments here okay then i'm going to enjoy my breakfast here after that i'll just meditate in shishaji swamigal place and then i am going to spend half my day today only in mumbai and after that i'm making an exit from here towards bangalore and then i'll update you probably by tomorrow so i have not been able to make a lot of videos or any other content yesterday i was busy a lot here also i was having some personal sessions here uh, physical uh, personal sessions as well as online there were two three so tirunamalai has kept me busy <laughs> at work here and i never denied anybody who was asking for a consultation here because i believe that's how they take the blessing and the person yesterday had had a divine divine experience yesterday somebody from canada they realized what arunachal is <laughs> okay guys take care lots of divine love and light to you stay blessed you are always in my prayers okay i pray for all of you stay blessed